Take it away, Hi, everyone. Hi, welcome. Thank you for coming out on this wonderful April Fool's Day. Um, did anyone else see the Duolingo April Fool's joke? Oh my goodness, they had a big thing on Twitter this morning saying that they were going to sell toilet paper that had phrases in different languages to help with language learning. <laughs> well, that's Some kidding. people thought it was real. A few of my students said, I would buy that. I said, oh, okay. Well, they said, you know, reading material. I'm like, oh gosh, really? But anyway, I thought that was a good one. Um, so today we're going to talk about gamifying your classroom appropriate for April Fool's Day. And we're going to focus on Quizlet, Gimkit, and Blookit. If at any point you want to follow along with the presentation on your own, feel free to go this to this tiny URL link. It should be tinyurl.com slash April Fool's idioma. So if you want to open that up separately so or make a copy so that you can take your own notes on it, please feel free to do so and feel free to share widely, okay? So first we're gonna talk about Quizlet. Quizlet was one of my first loves in terms of using technology in the classroom. And I think when I first used Quizlet, I used it for flashcards exclusively and just flashcards. And one of the things I really liked about it was that you could easily add pictures to flashcards. Then they changed it and made it so that you could add sound to flashcards. Then they really changed the game by adding quiz live and diagrams. So there's a big change now, but for the better. And I think it's really fun. So here are my top 10 tips for Quizlet. First, don't feel limited by flashcards. It doesn't have to be L1 to L2 all the time. You can do it with definitions. You can do it with translations. You can do it with trip descriptions. I do kind of a taboo type thing where I have something in the target language and then have it described in the target language. So you can really do a lot of different things with the Quizlet flashcard set. It doesn't just have to be L1 to L2. So keep in mind that. And here you can see that you, again, if you have the paid subscription, you can add audio to that, your own audio, or in many languages, unfortunately not for Latin or ancient Greek, it has audio that you can use. <laughs> I'm stuck doing my own audio. My students are stuck with me, but that's okay. Next, this is something that I love doing, fill in the blank. So when you're making a diagram, you can edit the diagram to create holes. And so students will have to fill in the blank. Ooh, good question in the chat. I'm gonna go back a sec. To do your own audio, you have to have a paid account. And then when you're making the Quizlet set, when you're editing, you can click on this and add it. Let me show you actually, let me get a window open so I can show you, I'm happy to do that. Okay, here we go. Don't mind my Lord of the Rings background there. Uh, <laughs> Hello, Aragorn. All right, so, <laughs> so let's say, for example, I wanted to pronounce some Greek for my students and because I think that maybe they wouldn't understand what that is. See, that doesn't, that's not Greek. I don't know what that was. It was trying to pretend that it knew Greek. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to click on it and I will click on this little microphone that's add voice recording. And I will actually, I'll switch to the term because that's what I want. I'm gonna hold the space bar to record. Allah. And it will, that, it, let's see. Oh, that was terrible. Let me try again. <laughs> I'll try to be a little slower. That my problem with this is I speak so fast. I have to really give myself a little time. Allah. And so that's how you do it. And then that saves. Um, and this is super easy because all you do is hold down the space bar. Again, this is with the free account, but I, oh, no, the not free account, this is with the paid account, which is, I think it's something like $33 a year. But I find that it is super helpful for what it comes with because it comes with 
the ability to record yourself, but it also comes with these rich text features, which I find makes a much more inclusive classroom when you can indicate things using rich text. And you can also kind of use your own images if you want to. So another, so the other thing I was talking about was fill in the blank. So let me grab something I can do fill in the blank with and just show you what that looks like. Look at, let's look at my library of millions of things. Let's see. I know there's a Caesar one that I've been playing around with. Let's see. Yes, I've done quite a few. Aha, here's one. Oh no, I clicked on my name instead. Silly me. Hold on one second, my apologies. Here we go. So here I'm talking about how to do things like fill in the blank. And here I've used a diagram. Now for most of my diagrams, I use screenshots. I have found that for Quizlet, screenshots seem to work really, really well. And that works for me. So I'm gonna click edit. And right here, I've done some boxes, but I don't really need those boxes right now. I can though. So let's say I wanted to do a term and definition from where it is in the text. I can put a box around it. That's what this rectangle is. I can also add a point in the diagram if I wanted to, and then add the term and the definition. I can also add a shape if there's a shape I want that's not a box. Um, if I wanna add it, the image itself, that's how I do fill in the blank. So what I do is click and drag to blur. So let's say I wanted people to guess who Orgetorix was. I would blur it out by making a bigger box than that. Do, 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 do. I want them to guess the name here. So what I would do is I put a blur mark there. I would click okay. And then if I want my students to guess what that is, I'll put a point there and I will put the term that I want them to guess. And I will say the leader of the Helvetii. And so now that will be added and students are going to have to guess from context, what is blurred. So it's a two-step process. You have to edit the diagram, do the blurring, save it, and then you can add a point over where it's blurred. Where do you do so, the blurring again? Sure. So with, I've with at the box. Sorry. Sorry. Is it the box that you do the blurring with? Ah, uh, no. So this is the this is how to edit the diagram and add points to the diagram. I actually have to edit the image itself. So there, it's an extra step to edit that image. And so let's say I wanted to blur his name all over the place. I could do that, and that would blur it out. Okay. So it's a way to do fill in the blank. I love doing this with simple stories that my students are familiar with in the target language so that they can provide details. You could even do this if you wanted to do, let's say um, you have a story, but you can blur out different sentences and have students guess what would happen in which order. You could do also with signpost words, I've done it so that this happens after, this happens before, so that students have to logically deduce where the signpost word goes. And so there's a lot of cool things you can do with diagrams. I'm gonna talk about diagrams a little bit more. Yes, I'll be back, Quizlet. Maybe I'll just leave you there. Okay. So this is definitely one of my favorite things to do, which is do a diagram, no matter what. If I'm doing a text, I wanna do something contextualizing what we're going over. So this, these dots here are for Caesar 1.1 and this is all contextualized vocabulary words that I've taken out. So students have to understand what vocab word might belong there based on what we've been studying. Also, I lumped these together because I think they were very similar in what I was doing. What I did was I had a diagram, a map and a face. And so for this one, students were identifying what happens in each part of the bathhouse. For this one, students were identifying different places throughout the Roman Empire. And you can see I used the blur feature to blur out the names. So students would then have to provide those names. For this one, I uploaded a picture of a Greek face, a Greek statue face, and had students tell me what the words were in Greek and then defines them in, the, in L1. 
So that was fun. And it was a cool way to do that. And I've done that with a lot of different pictures, just describing things and having students pick out what that is. And again, blurring out for predictive text. So if it's something students have read or it's something they um, should be familiar with, you can blur out larger sections too with predictive text. Also questions in context. I find that using, this is actually something I did in a Google doc and I added the rich text format and took a screenshot of this and then asked students questions about everything that I had in bold. So this is something too that you could do with your students. You could add the rich text before you take the screenshot and then um, go in there and add the, the different dots for Quizlet. And it's really cool when you're using Quizlet because there are many different types of assessment styles. Oh, I see something in the chat. Oh, you get to pick that, Lisa. That's a really good question. You can um, pick whether it's definitions or terms when you're setting it up for students. So um, if, or if you, you can do flip that, it. If you do that once, does it stay for all of them? They, in the options, how do, you, how do you know that it stays the way you want it to go? You don't, you can flip it back and forth. If you're assigning it to them though, let me show you what that might look like. So let's say that I was assigning this to my students. So I am done here and now I'm going to assign it. So I want to assign a test to my students. So I'm going to click test and I'm going to create the test and my different options for the test are down here. So I can do, I can control what they have to answer in. So I can control that they're doing written question types, that they're doing multiple choice question types or true false. I can do grading options if I want to do that. I can also say if they have to answer these questions in Latin or in English. And if I had certain starred terms, I could say just do the starred terms. So that's a way where you don't have to recreate the wheel every time. Let's say you have a list of a hundred vocabulary words, but you just wanted to quiz them on 20. You could just star them. And then only 20 would show up when you clicked test if you clicked starred. So that's a way to limit that. So yes, you can choose. So here I have chosen to have the questions in English and then the students have to answer in Latin. But you, so yes, you can choose that. Um, if you're assigning to them as a test. So then when you sent them the link to that, they would have that option clicked. Does that make sense? Absolutely, yep, yeah. thank you. Okay, cool. So I like study mode because my students are always doing it on their phones, but also the competitive review is so helpful and this is all about playing games. So we're gonna go over that too. Yes, you can and choose when you play Quizlet Live, which of course we're going to be playing. Um, again, there, there are many different learning activities. Um, there is learning where students can see how they're doing. Um, they're just trying to learn the terms, flashcards when they're going back and forth. They have to write the terms, um, spell the terms. I tend to use a lot of flashcards, match and gravity personally, but um, the match and gravity are timed. Oops. Okay. So these are, I have some students too that don't appreciate having time. So I recommend that they do another activity. And I can check in my class folders. If you have class folders, if you have the Quizlet teacher account, you can check who did what, which is kind of fun. So let's say I'm going to check my classes. Um, I'm gonna check mythology. I'm gonna see if anybody did the homework. Did you do the homework? Oops, nope, I didn't mean to do that. Well, it looks like there are two members, so they didn't even all join. Let's see if they did any progress. Oh, one kid did it, yay. <laughs> but that's not always the case. Um, and so if you assign it as a homework, let's see if I can get some more results that might be better. So if I go to classes, um, oh, this one. My Greek students probably used it a lot, hopefully. And then I can see the progress. And oh, well, still only one student did it, even though I assigned it, but that's okay. Um, and you can see the different sets. So let's say who did Greek letters. 
oh, same student, but at least they did it. That's awesome. Uh, so um, you can see who did what usually, which is helpful. It looks like I had a question in the chat though. I'm gonna go there. Oh, okay. So I'd assign them a homework. Oh no, I closed out a close look. So what I would do is, From here, I'd go to my library. I would go to classes. And let's say that I am going over and assigning something to Greek. So what I would do here, so I'm just seeing if they've done it at all. And this is something that I've shared with them. So from here, I could go to the set and I could share it with students and say, okay, this is your homework assignment. Sorry, it's taking a little while to load. So I'm gonna to go to share and I'm gonna share mine directly on Google Classroom. So this will take me to Google Classroom. Um, and then I will create an assignment through Google Classroom. And it will have the Quizlet link in it. And I'll choose the due date, I'll choose the topic and I'll explain the instructions here. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's see. I think there was another question. Okay. Ah, I don't think there needs to be a paid account for homework assignments. Um, there might be to cr create classes, but I think you can still share on Google Classroom. I just don't Actually, know if you can create classes. I do know that you don't need to have a paid one to, um, to create classes, but check with your districts before you add the students, because there are some districts that don't allow for privacy purposes, mm -hmm. their students to sign up for. So for example, we use Quizlet all the time, but we can't assign anything. Uh, we can't ask the kids to log on. They have to just play through the link because it's mm -hmm. not an approved, um, unfortunately and frustratingly, it's not approved in our district. So um, do check in with your district before you automatically sign the kids up in a class. But you can yeah. still use the class feature to divide your sets so that like you can put all of your sets almost like in a, a folder, you can put them in the separate classes without um, having to sign the kids up. That's right, yeah. Um, and also for Blook It and Gim Kit, which I'm going to show later, you can absolutely have students play it without signing in per se. So that's really helpful. Gravity is a fun kind of space game. Oh no. And so students shoot things like the old Space Invaders game. And so it's fun. And you can choose again, options for how students play it. And students can also search for helpful sets and copy it to their own account. I think that's something that's really, really helpful for my students is to look through my account and copy things to their own account that they find useful so that they can download it on their phones if they want to do it later. And finally, what I really like, rich text and pronunciation, I, which I already showed you, but I think it's so helpful. And I really appreciate that they picked rich text that's supposed to be colorblind friendly, which is nice um, and very helpful. So it's time. We have to do a little Quizlet Live, all right? Who here has played Quizlet Live? I think it's so fun. So let's see, I'm going to search for one. What are people in the mood for? I have to say Disney characters and Marvel characters are pretty much what my students want when we do these. Disney. Disney, you got yeah, it. Yeah, let's okay. go Disney. I love it. If it's a Disney what? crowd, we'll stick to Disney all night. I love it. What do you okay. do when you what do you do personally when you have classes that are too large? Like this year I haven't been able to is I have like 30 in a class. And I used to love playing the Quizlet Live, but I can't with the large classes like that. Oh, really? I didn't know there was a limit. Well, it's not that it's a limit, you just can't show like who's winning because it doesn't there's not enough room on the screen. Oh, my students don't even want me to show who's winning. They like they get really nervous when I show the leaderboard. <laughs> My, my kids like to see that. And then they don't think it's fun if you can't see that. Oh, you can also make your screen like super small. <laughs> I have one class of 18, so they don't all fit. 
So I, I try to make it super small and that, that helps, but it's hard. All right, so let's do individuals, that's fun. And let's do it this way, not the Jeopardy way. And if you wanna turn off the music, you can. <laughs> um, okay, I'm gonna play to you, why not? Oh no, I'll just watch, it's more fun. So if you go to quizlet.live and you add the code, then you can join. Also, if you're into QR codes, you can share the QR code or you can copy game link. I can just copy the game link actually, put it in the chat too, that might be easier. I'm sorry, what do we do to get into it? Here. If you click that link, it will take you to it. Where, oh. oh, I love your T-Rex, Alisa. <laughs> I'm sorry, where do I click? Uh, in the chat right now, there is a link. Oh, okay. Ah. Uh. And no pressure if you don't want to play, that's okay. Uh, we can <laughs> We can also um, no just, play. you can be an observer, no judgment. Oh, yeah, we're observer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is everyone observe. signed in who wants to be signed in? Yep. No, I will okay. observe. All right, just take a look. It's okay. okay. So look, you get a wonderful animal and they actually have them in Latin. It's so exciting. So many places don't have things in Latin. So it always makes me happy. Um, so let's go start this game. And so this is the leaderboard we were talking about. So again, I love that this is anonymous so that students don't know who they are and it's just different animals. So nobody feels like, oh no, I'm the one last. But you can also see if people are answering or not. So I like to say, oh, I see you tigers. You're not answering right now. And I just, I make it silly for them. Oh, we have some Disney aficionados around here. Wow. I'm not getting Disney, I'm getting Zebras, Kim Kardashian. Uh oh. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Yay! Woohoo! I've never and so, played on this with my phone, like on this. That's so nice. much fun. What's super frustrating though, what my kids get like audibly angry about is when you get one wrong, you have to wait three seconds and it sends you all the way back to zero and they lose their minds. They get yep. so competitive and frustrated. <laughs> yeah, this was not purely Disney. The Cleveland Browns is how I just won, so. <laughs> okay, well, they deceived us. That's okay. Okay, that's fine. We'll find Disney for the next one. I have to oh, figure out before... how to get back. Oh, and before we move on, I wanna show you my special trick for, um, kind of copying if you want to copy something to, um, so if you want to copy a Quizlet, everything I do in Book It and Gimp It comes from Quizlet. I just want to put that out there. If you go to here to your set, if you go to these three dots, go down to export, click copy text, and then let's say I'm going to do a Book It. I will go into Book It. Oh, come on, Book It. I go on you all the time. I'm gonna log in. And I'm going to create a new set using what I just copied. So I'm gonna say testing because I don't know what I just copied. I can add an image if I want. The students seem to like it when I add images. And then I do Quizlet import. Then I click this, it will give you the steps to do this. It's very kind like that. And on my Mac, I just hit Command V. If you're on a PC, you hit Control V, it pastes it in, you add the questions. And I have created a book it in just about a minute, which is so very helpful. Um, the same thing with GimKit. GimKit allows you to do the same thing. So everything I do, I actually do on Quizlet and then transfer it over. And I find this really helps my students who are a little bit less competitive and my students who may want to do things on their own first, because then we can, um, 
have them kind of work on it on their own before you play in class. And it kind of gets a little of that anxiety away. So I share the Quizlets in advance, but they don't share the Blickets and the Gim Kits unless they're homework assignments. So anyway, I'm glad I got the competitive juices flowing. We got two more to go. Um, now we're gonna talk about Gim Kit. Gim Kit is something that's changing and growing all the time. They just added a Pictionary game, which is so much fun. My students are loving it. Um, and they also are starting a new thing that's like Bitcoin called Gimcoin, where students can get coin, like digital coin for games, which is wild. And I think it might be, I don't know, it'd be cool. I don't think they can use it for anything, but it's, it's kind of cool. Okay. They don't care. They just want to win and they want to collect as much as they can. So, hey, any All kind of points. motivation we can get, right? All the points. Yeah. You can choose from so many different types of games. Um, again, Draw That's the newest one. Trust No One is probably my students' favorite, and I'll talk about that in a minute. They do not like The Floor is Lava because they have to help each other. And that just speaks to how my students are. Um, but there are so many different things to choose from. And usually I either kind of visually poll students, I ask them to raise their hands if they want this, or I, um, I have an actual poll on Zoom. So it really depends on what they want to do. I have found that the best teacher versus student one is boss battle, and they just love it because they want to annihilate you. Um, I think it really, it's fun, because in some ways it totally levels the playing field for them, because they're, I mean, they're working together against you. And also, I find when they're like throwing things at you, it's kind of nice when they're throwing the mean things at the teacher and not each other. So I really like that. Also in GimKit, you can add money to students as you're playing. I'll show you how to do that. And you could freeze them. So if I find a student's being particularly mean to other students, I'll just freeze them for a while. Cause I'm like, okay, you're done, you've done enough. Um, there's also like, they all have so many strategies. They're like, okay. So you get the quad grader and you get all these power-ups and then you get the one where you reboot and then you use everything and then you reboot it. So they have all these strategies for how they play. Um, cooperative games, again, these are the ones, trust no one my students like, but they prefer to be kind of directly in competition with each other. Um, I have one class that's very nice to each other that enjoys the floors lava. Every other class says, oh no, we don't want to do that one. And team mode, I found that even though it works so pretty well in breakout rooms, I find that they don't like that mode as much. So trust no one though is a fun cooperative game. Has anyone here played Among Us? Ah, okay, so it's similar to the, um, the phone game or app Among Us. Now, Pictionary mode has been super fun. And I think that it's neat because students can draw and students can take turns or you could pick a random student to draw. So it really depends. Also, I play super rich mode almost every day because I can pick a time limit. I can say, okay, we're playing for four minutes. Whoever gets the most money wins. And that's something that is so nice to either end class. Today, I ended one of my classes this way. I also began one of my classes this way. Just something quick to get everybody moving, especially at the end of the day where they're so tired, just something to kind of engage their brain right away. Um, there are fun pop culture references, talking about the floor is lava and the floor is lava show, doing trust no one because it's like among us, or even infinity mode, talking about the different infinity stones. And the pro tip for my students is never reveal you have your stones until the very end, because if you do that, everyone will try to get you. So that's a pro tip for my students there. Um, my students really like it for homework as well. But I would caution, they, they, the, what they set for homework is to get $100,000 in some modes and some of them are really hard. So I had a student who said, I spent three hours playing this last night. And I said, oh, that was not what I wanted for your homework. But um, just, <laughs> just to let you know, you don't have to do that. You can do it lower. You can change the settings when you set it for homework. Um, also, you can search, and here you can see, I was thinking about Disney a little bit, because my students love Disney, so, um, and I do this actually with my advisees, kind of like my homeroom students, we love to play things just as kind of a way to do a warm up as people are entering the room or leaving the room, and so doing something like this and looking up a silly Disney one or Marvel or, we did flags of the world, we did 
popular brands and logos and things like that. It was super cool. It's neat. We're, we're learning each other's strengths and weaknesses, which is fun. Um, you can also um, save things by class. And so I have these classes set up, but a lot of my students don't like to log in. So that's why I don't have them populated. And again, if you have a district where you can't do that, you can absolutely um, not set them up by class. But if you can, you can set them up by class. So either way. And finally, they just came out with this, I, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, you can actually play seasons so they can keep track of their stats. And I know for my students, that's super helpful. And so they can see like who's on the leaderboard from the day-to-day -day thing, because we play GimKit almost every day in class. So it's kind of nice to see how they're doing against each other. Again, if students are allowed to log in. So I thought that might be fun. All right, who would like to try some GimKit? Awesome. Should we stick to the Disney theme? Is that what people are enjoying? Because sure. that's totally fine. Let's do it. Let's try to find a real Disney one this time. Oh no, I don't want to, I want to be logged into this one. Hold on. I have two GimKit accounts, one that's upgraded and one that's not. And I want to do the upgraded one. Hold on one sec. I don't know why I'm logged into this one. Okay. Oh, nope. Login. There we go. Sorry about that. Okay. It's thinking about it. Oh, wait, no, I have the GIMP kit. I think I must have bought it with the other one. Yep, I'm so sorry. I logged into the wrong account again. Oh my gosh, sorry. All right, don't worry. You will get to show off your Disney knowledge. We are going to do this. Now, do we have a preference of what mode we would like to play? I feel like Disney mode with drawing might be fun or challenging or like super challenging. You wanna try the drawing mode? Let's do it. Um, so many things, okay. Okay, so let's do Disney and drawing mode. Let's find a Disney that we like. Awesome, okay. Let's do it. All right, let's play and let's draw. Now, one thing I will say, it, my students were really upset with me the other day. Oh, so see, you can do what the round duration is. You can see how many letters are revealed. So blank, nothing shown, only one letter revealed first and last or 50% or 75%. I usually do 50%. Um, I usually turn off the music and I always make it so that players can join late. Okay, so you go to gimkit.com slash live and then you enter the code. I'll give you that link in the chat. And then you can enter the code here. Oh, it didn't become a link. Let's see. Oh, it's not letting me make it a link. That's okay. Awesome. So take a minute, log in if you'd like. If you want to be an observer, that's okay too. No pressure. Has anyone played this mode before? Oh, excellent. Oh, fun. Neato. Okay. Is anyone else going to log in? If not, you can observe. No pressure at all. And as I tell my students every time, don't feel pressure when drawing. Fancy stick figures are awesome. Whenever they feel self-conscious, I just tell them like, okay, what animal should I draw for you on the board? And all of my animals look like dinosaurs. So. <laughs> Ooh, Lisa, let's see. <gasps> I think I know. That's adorable. Yeah, at least I can't. That's so funny. <laughs> That's so cute. Aww. 
And see here in the corner, in the bottom right here in the corner, you can see who's guessed correctly. And you can choose any length of time you want to do. Um, the, I chose 60 seconds, but you could also choose 30 seconds to make it more challenging if you want. Uh, I feel like 60 seconds is more like traditional Pictionary, so. Awesome, and you get points if people guess your drawing and if you guess the drawing. So let's do one more round, let's see. Ooh, it's a long one. Was it just a coincidence that Lisa's the drawer both times, or does the drawer stay the same for each round or for the rounds? Just a coincidence. Okay. I said pick random student. Got it. Sorry, Lisa. <laughs> this is fun though. What the heck? Oh, wait. I think I know. Should I know what this is? Oh, yeah. Oh, I spelled it wrong. No, oh, I spelled it wrong again. I like, though, that you can keep You're guessing. Mr. Cat. Yeah, I do too. I think that's awesome. I think it's nice. It's less limiting. Awesome. Great job, everybody. I hope that was fun. Oh, no. <laughs> Says zero points. We don't talk about it. <laughs> Honestly, I could not figure out how to draw that. Could you tell? That was awesome. No, no that, that was, was so great. I understood. I'm so I didn't realize I was going to be picked as the drawer. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm like, this is what I do for my kids to show them it doesn't really matter how well you draw because I'm worse than you. That was a great example of that. Like, I'm sorry it randomly picked you. Know. Oh no, you did so much better than I would have done. <laughs> did you guys guess the first one? I, I was like, oh yeah. yeah okay. All right. At least the, the second part of this competition then comes up in the corner. There's a, uh, it's gone now, but the kids are able oh, to sorry. clap. No, no, no. It's totally fine. The kids are able to clap. Mm -hmm. for the, and my kids sit there. One of my kids figured out how to rig the mouse on his computer to auto click. And they try to figure out, they try to get as many claps as they can. It's ridiculous. Of course. <laughs> so now we're going to talk about Blook It. And I was so skeptical. I thought Blook It was just for little kids. But my 18-year-olds are obsessed with Blook It. They beg me for Blook It. Um, they actually, I told them I wasn't going to give them any homework over the weekend. And they said, no, no, Mrs. Lamb, we need a Blook It. We need to go over Blook It. So <laughs> I thought that was very funny. <laughs> I said, I'd never had a kid ask me for homework before. This is really weird, guys. <laughs> so, um, these are books, and because it's April Fool's, they're all upside down, which is so goofy. Um, some of them come with, so this up until this seal, all the books above it come with the program. But then based on how many points you get during games, you can buy new books in the marketplace. And so this is what the marketplace looks like. You can buy a space box and you, a breakfast box, a medieval box or wonderland box, depending on how many books you have. Again, to play Blook It, you don't have to log in at all. But if students choose to log in, which mine have, <laughs> they buy lots of books. I have some kids who have almost bought all of them now. So it's, it's fun. Um, and I thought it would, they would think it was silly, but they actually really love it. Um, and they have things like rare ones. And so it's almost like Pokemon cards a little bit. Um, these are the rare ones I've got. So I have the unicorn one, which is my claim to fame. That's my only really rare one. Um, it's called epically rare, which is fun, but it's just, it's neat. And it's just a fun, silly thing they can do with it. Um, they love this one, Gold Quest. And I must say, I've had to tell them many times to not use salty language when playing Gold Quest because they get very frustrated. And then I say to them, everyone, why do you want to play this? It's so frustrating for you. They said, but it's a good kind of frustration because it's a game of chance. 
Um, I often play with them when we play Gold Quest because I can get every single answer right and fail miserably, which they appreciate. So <laughs> they think it's kind of fun. So this is definitely the favorite. Whoops, I skipped on. This is probably their second favorite, the tower defense. This is, uh, they had some game when they were little that was close to this. It's just kind of a tower. You build your towers and try to shoot the things that are coming out. And you get to build things based on how many points you get from answering multiple choice questions right, which is pretty cool. And I think it's like Kahoot, it's taken multiple choice and made it super fun. And again, it doesn't have to be multiple choice with just one answer. You can use your Quizlet sets to make it so that it's different definitions, that it's actual questions that you want answers to. Um, today I was trying, I'm going to be reading Hannibal by Cornelius Nepos, which I'm so excited about this string with Latin three. And so I said, okay, does anyone remember anything about the Punic Wars? And they all said, uh, so I went on Quizlet, found a quick overview of the Punic Wars and I just put it in book it and then they were all sold. And then by the end, they knew things about the Punic Wars, which was awesome. Um, the one-on-one -on -one ones with the brackets are another one that's fun because I think students are super competitive. Just like Quizlet Live, I really appreciate that Look It can let the teacher choose to pick the names. I think that's really important because if students are on the leaderboard and maybe they feel self-conscious about where they are on the leaderboard, it's nice and you can pick names. And I'll show you how to do that as I set everyone up for this. Racing is just fun and it's probably the quickest book it. So if you're looking for something like I was talking about the gim kit super money mode, if you're looking for something super quick to start class, I would highly recommend doing racing mode because it's probably the fastest one that goes. Um, tower mode takes a really long time and even gold quest takes a while. So if you're looking for fast and furious, it's all about racing. Um, this one, my students enjoy. It's like Settlers of Catan for our board game aficionados. And it's Crazy Kingdom. So you're talking about how to manage your resources well. And so I have found that this really appeals to some of my students. Um, so they're answering questions to be able to distribute resources effectively. So if you have Settlers of Catan fans, this will be a good one. And Tower of Doom, my students who play D&D &D are a little bit obsessed with. They say it's kind of a combo of magic cards and D&D. &D. And maybe it's just speaking about my students that they enjoy it very much. But I, I actually thought it was really fun too. Um, and so it, it, it's just interesting. Again, these are modes for homework only, but they're such engaging homework that I find when I assign these for homework, students do their homework, which is always a good thing. And if you're going to do a classic mode, you can do this like Kahoot. And the real, the reason I like it so much is it's harder to import things into Kahoot than it is to import things into Blookit. Because from Blookit, you can just copy and paste from Quizlet, just like I showed you with the export. It's like two steps. It's so easy. It's a little bit more time consuming with Kahoot. So that's why I like it. Also, if you assign it, you can see when it's due and you can see how many people did it. So for example, for when I did Quintus Concilius Caput, I had to assign it again because I, had, I have nine students in the class and two students did it. So I said, okay, here, I'm signing again. The rest of you do it. Or um, for this one, I had all of the students do it, but for some of them, some of the students didn't do it. So you can see who does it, which is nice. And also you can see what, how many percentages people are getting correct, which is nice so that you can say, okay, they did really well with this homework assignment, or maybe, they didn't do as well with this homework assignment and try to think about why or ask students why as you look over the homework. So you ready to accept the challenge of the book it. Awesome. And I know I'm going a little bit over time. So if you need to stay after to ask questions, I am absolutely happy to stay and answer any questions you have or answer by email. Um, please take advantage of that. I'm happy to answer emails. So here we go, look it. So much fun. Again, did not think my 18 year olds would be so into this, but they absolutely love it. Okay, let's find a good one. We are going to discover. That's how we search. Ooh, you wanna do name that logo to do something different? Let's do it. Ooh, I see a question. Let's check it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to host it, and what I'm going to do then, 
is what do we want to play? Do you want to play Gold Quest? The frustrating one? Yeah, of course. And so uh, I'm going to do this to be a quick one. So it's going to be four minutes. And I am going to do it so that I use random names. It'll select a name for you. So you can actually click there. You have five options for names. But once you click past it, you can't go back. So it's kind of a game of chance. And sometimes they're really fun. Um, what was someone today? Someone had a great one today. I can't remember what it was. It was like Troll Hunter or something. So, so feel free to join. I'm going to turn off the music just because I find it's so loud in my earbuds. I don't know if anyone else finds that when you're using your computer. You but um, I'm going to copy. The chat? Oh, yeah. I'll copy the join link, of course. There you go. Ooh, Dawnfinder, that's a cool one. Earthcaster, cool. Ghostforge, fun. All right, does anyone else want to join? Awesome, Thunderbloom. And you can change the little books too before you, if, if you don't like your animal look thing, you can change it as well. Ooh, worm mender, fun. It's asking me to sign up or log in. Did I do something wrong? If you go to lookit.com slash play, it should let you in just putting in the game ID. There's, if you click the link, um, join game, it's below, it's at below the blue. Oh, sorry. Where, yeah, just hit join game. Lisa, I thought the same thing when I, Oh, all right. Let me try it again. Yeah. Yeah. If you click join a game, then you don't have to log, log in or sign up. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not letting me in either. I don't know why. Because uh, if you I, click join a game, if here, you're using your can... phone, then it, I'm then not. it's below the word look at. Yeah. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm having trouble with that. Here, look at com slash play and then just enter in. Yeah. Let me do that. Yeah, I'm sorry, the, the Zoom controls are getting in the way. There we go. There, that's better. So 4935. Now I, it says get a nickname. And then when I choose it and I push the arrow, then it, then it asks me to join. Hmm. Yeah, but you don't have to log in, do you? No. I, it's asking, oh. let's see. Mine is just saying waiting in lobby. Yeah, yep. that's where you should be. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm, I'm good. All right. All right. Sorry. No, not at all. So you answer questions, you select your chests, and you collect your gold and take gold from others, which is super fun. Or have it taken from you. Yeah. Well, that's what happens most of the time. <laughs> My students have said that it is better to be in second place than first place because then you can make a pass for the finish because usually people attack the person in first. So again, these are pro, I asked, I told my students I was doing this webinar and I said, what are some pro tips? And that was one of their tips. They said, don't be in first place, be in second place, because if you're in first place, everyone's just going to steal your gold. John Finder. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> stop it. Oh no, I got the wrong. Oh no. I got one wrong. Ha <laughs> ha. I don't have any more gold. Stop taking gold from me. <laughs> My students love when I play this too because they think it's really funny to take gold from the teacher. So I always tell them who I am so they can just attack me. If they need to attack someone, I'm cool with them be it being me. That's fine. Same with Gim Kit. I say, I, I reveal myself so they know, <laughs> they know which one they can attack and it's fine. <laughs> it makes it more of a challenge. And another thing I do is when I get the swap, usually I just swap with whoever has the least amount so that they can get in the game because that's oh, hard. That's nice. That's yeah. hard. It must be hard to be in last place. Like, it's like, okay, get right. you in the game. Wait, do you have to? I don't want to swap, but I have to. Ugh. You have to. So even if you're in first place, you have to swap. You're welcome, whoever I just gave 
money to. Oh no, I got that one wrong. My students say that if you if you wait long enough, one of them said it didn't force him to swap, but I'm not sure that's working anymore. <laughs> one of my other students had a theory that if you always picked the same chest, you would have better luck, but we have disproved that theory since. <laughs> We've been trying it different ways. Oh, this is, I completely understand the good frustration. <laughs> I get it now. When it's good, it's good, but then when it's not going well, it's, oh no. Ooh, thank you, C-Mask. How do you take gold from somebody? It's just whatever the chest says? It's whatever the chest says. So uh, we don't have control over it, unfortunately. That's why this round is particularly frustrating for some of my students, because even if they get every single question right, they could still lose. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, but no, stop it, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> stop taking my gold. Oh man. Less oh, than a minute left. We can't see the time. I was just going to ask that. We can't see the time. Ha, Moonhaven. Well, so whoever's in first place constantly changes too. It's not right. just a, it's not a given. Oh, yes, it's gotten to the point where someone will be in first place when it ends, but someone did a masterful move at the very end and has switched it so that they are in the lead when they show the winnings. It's really funny. Oh, I am not doing well, but there's really like, you want to get them right, but that doesn't right. mean you're going to win. Yeah. That's not really, at all. That's a and lot a of couple fun. 50 or 25% offs in a row will really hurt your score. Oh. I'm having trouble keeping track of my score and doing the game at the same time. <laughs> Don't look yes, at your score. I, yeah. When I play, I, I play with I my was. phone right in front of my screen. <laughs> I also forgot who I was. Like I, Ooh, I don't know who my name is. Second. Nice. I win. Yay. Alisa, you <laughs> won all three. That's play. awesome. Oh, you know. <laughs> Good for you. Is it cheating when the idioma person oh, wins all three? No. Yes. And it's so great. I know we don't have time, but we're gonna have, you know. If you make your own and you want to share it with me, feel free. Um, here is my Twitter and my Snapchat and my email, latintechtools at gmail.com. Let me know if you make one and it works out well. I'd love to hear from you. But also, if you have any questions or if I can help you in any way, please feel free to reach out. I am absolutely happy to help. Um, again, I'm going to go. So here is my contact info. But I, um, I wanted to show some of these from Idioma and upcoming programming. So we have a lot of cool things coming up. Yeah, brand new courses for the summer. We've got two summer sessions running. And of course we have our summer institute. So go on the website, check out our new courses. And we're launching uh, our new general education courses this summer too. So if you have colleagues you work with that you think would really love taking a course with us but they don't teach a language, Good news, we've got um, IEP development for your special ed teacher friends, classroom behavior management, methods and materials for differentiation. There's uh, social studies. Um, I wanna say there's some math courses. Off the top of my head, I can't remember, but we have so many new courses coming out for the summer, brand new ones that you guys have never seen before. So go check them out. We also have a code, a special um, $100 off hundred dollars off um until sunday so if you want i'm going to put this in the chat for you if you want uh i think it's a hundred spring 21 i'm pretty sure I'm, nope it's not it's not that it's a hundred summer 21 if you're interested in taking a course with us one of our summer courses and you want to get a really good deal a hundred dollars off we almost never offer that kind of a discount, but we're so excited about the new courses and we really want people to take them and give us feedback and we wanna know what's working. We wanna know what you like. So please, please um, 
sorry, my phone just started ringing. So please, please, please go check those out. Use the code. It's only good through Sunday. Um, and yeah, so much good stuff going on. So thank you. Thank you so much for coming and absolutely feel free to reach out with any questions you have or if you play it and it's fun, let me know. Um, I, I really enjoy it. Like I said, I play Quizlet, Look It, or GimKit every single day in my classes. I think it's just such a great way to engage students. So feel free to let me know how you're doing, ask questions. If you want to brainstorm something, let me know. Maureen, so uh, when your students walk in your class, one of the first things they do is either a gim kit or um, a blue kit with you or at their own pace, or it depends. Is that part of your daily procedure? Yes, yeah, so I like to start with something that's kind of a do now. And I feel like doing something that's especially, I find my classes end up being disproportionately first thing in the morning or at the end of the day when students are just lacking energy. So if I do something that kind of gets them thinking and gets them engaged right away, it really, really helps. Okay. Awesome. But um, yeah, and I try to link it to things we've done already. So kind of review too, or, or things where I want to build on something we did last time. So let's say last time we did a uh, kind of a gim kit that was about vocabulary. Maybe I'll do one that's more like, ooh, see if you could put the pieces of this story back together or see if you can understand this pop-up grammar with the grammar and context from the story we just read. So I try to make it relevant to what we've been doing in class. Right. With my advisees or what's really my homeroom, I always do fun, silly ones. But that's a good way also to keep them awake because I get them right before lunch and they just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It's hard, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for being here. We can hang out for a few minutes if anybody wants, has any more questions or if you want to go over anything with Maureen. Um, super, super, super happy to see you all here. Thank you so much for giving up some time on your Thursday night uh, to really it's for your students, right? Because they're the ones ultimately that benefit. So I'm going to thank you on behalf of your students. <laughs> and of course, on behalf of us, we're really, really um, happy to provide these opportunities to connect our community. Thank you so much for being here, everybody. Thanks, Thanks so much for coming. Yeah. Dude, don't you think they're for us too? Because we enjoy playing it with them. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. I, I'm especially fond of the one that we just played because my kids, they get so mad. So <laughs> mad. And, I'll, and I'll be like, oh, I just noticed that so-and-so stole from so-and-so. Let's be careful. Yeah. Away. You have to comment. Yes. I have a really quick question, Maureen. When yeah, I do sure. Quizlet, I actually take grades from it. So that's one of the ways oh, okay. that I take a grade. And so if I do it like right now, I just do a quick quiz every once in a while. But mm -hmm. if they've already done the Quizlet before, it super imposes the new grade on top of the old one. Is there any way of going back and finding out what they like going back two weeks and seeing what that grade was? Because then if they're trying to make up work and they hadn't done the Quizlet before and they right. weren't it up, then I then th they've got a grade on there or if they did it and then we play a game they're like but I already did it and I'm like oh my god so I didn't take their quick grade from it but just want to see what there's any way of going back because sometimes I get stuck I yeah. wish that there was a way um yeah. I figured there, that not that I know of unfortunately yeah. I wish I could say that there was a good way to do that I think that um the idea is that actually Quizlet encourages that it's not a grading tool. It's more of like a kind of a formative assessment tool. So I think that's why kind of the best grade is what appears. I think that's kind of the philosophy behind it. But yeah. I understand that if you're using it as a grading tool, that would be very frustrating. Yeah. I mean, I take just like a one moment at a time, like yeah. take this test, just like a, instead of doing it on paper, I do it on Quizlet. Mm -hmm. 